Let's talk about women's football development in Nigeria. We talk about women's football. Uh, that's the only sector. Look, there was a time the Super Eagles failed to qualify for the African Cup of Nations back to back. The ladies were going to their own version and they were winning for us back to back. They don't, they don't blink when it comes to women's football. The Four Corners, they are close to qualifying for uh, the FIFA on the 20 Women's World Cup in France. The Flamingos also close to qualifying uh, the Super Falcons. They won the last African Women's Cup of Nations, got back to the country, and started asking us for money. Give us our money, pay us our bonus and allowances. Yes, that one was done. And then, from that time till now, they've been so inactive. But then we're looking at the overall development. How can ex-international persons that have been there done that? How can they give back to the society? How can they get women into more football? We had Kumeni says nothing wrong women getting into boxing. Football has done well for this country. We need to bring more persons and give it an overall uh, winning mentality. So that's it on this part of the show. Now I'm being joined by uh, Ayesha Yusuf. She's a former Super Four Cons player. Uh, Shout out. Quite a beautiful run with the Super Falcons. Won three African Women's Cup of Nations tied to. Uh, she was active from 2002 to 2008. I think after the Beijing Olympics, I just packed the boat and said, done and dusted. She was a defender in a time. But when you see her, you say, how was she stopping presses? Let's welcome Aisa. Aisa, good to have you on Sports tonight. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here today. Yeah, good to have you again. Before we get into this shift football and empowering women, uh, in your days as a defender, how do you stop strikers? Uh, actually, I'm a very strong person. I'm very fast and I'm very calculative, you know. And sometimes I have to listen to my, my coaches because they give a lot of instruction, and most especially when the strikers are very fast, and then you have to, like, you know, mark them. But what about when they are huge and they're coming to uh, us? Trust me, I'm very good at lifting. I have to like compete with them all day. So I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. So because when I first saw Aisa, that's the question. Aisa was a fantastic defender. How was she doing it? And then I said, No, Austin, forget about it. Ninety percent of football is in the brain. Yeah, it's not about the stature or whatever. So let's talk about our women's football development in Nigeria. I see you've been involved in a lot of ways to not just you, Asisa Toshola, though still active, she's also giving her, her own 10% to development of women's football. How was she football campaign all about? Actually, she football is, um, uh, is my brand. It's something I really think is um, this is the right time to give back to the society and also to encourage, to inspire, to educate and to help the, the grassroots and the youngest out there. So this chief football is something I try to promote more women and also to get more ex-international involved because mm. this is the only way we can give back to the community as mm. well. Mm. And so that's and what, what were you telling this, this youngster? <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, uh, this uh, is at the start stadium. I was telling them one uh, kind of word of motivation. Because when I was playing back in those days, I never have parental support playing football. Yeah. I went through a, like, a lot, and you know, telling them from my experience and what I've gone through, and now I'm here today. So whatever you're doing, just keep um, more. Uh, you have to endure a lot. You have to persevere. You have to be focused, and at the same time, you have to know the kind of people you you move around with. So giving them this kind of um, motivational word for them to know that a road to success is, is not always easy. It's mm. rough and tough. Mm. But with your focus and um, perseverance, then That's you right. get there. That's right. I said, after you do all this talk and, and this young female footballer goes back home and mommy and daddy says, no, not football. Your mates are engineers, doctors. Why are you uh, going into football? How much role does parents have to play in terms of the girl child getting involved with football sports? Uh, to be honest, I think uh, the parents uh, need to uh, get a lot of role and, and try to also encourage them because parental word and courage also motivate you a lot. And that was why when I was giving this, um, my motivational word to them, because um, my story actually changed my community back in those days. Mm. Even when the parents say, see you as a girl playing football with guys, like, oh, she's a wayward girl, she don't want to go to school and stuff like that. So when the story changed from grass to grace, then every other parent support the parent, the children to go to f and play football. But that's why I said, I was like, okay, if you're a good role model, you need to let this parent and also people out there see what you went through. And now, having go through all this, you still, you still achieve all this. Mm. So that this alone can even give the parent at home the courage, okay, you can go and play because uh, I sat went through this and now she's there. Mm. Let's go way back. How did you start playing football? Uh, to be honest, I started playing football in the, in the street, like uh, normal, normal for fun. But then, you know, there's not, the, I guess not, not much girl playing those days. So I always play with the boys. 
kind of play like a kind of tom, tom, tomboy and then in the streets. And then, you know, uh, then I have to sneak out to play because I was not permitted uh -huh. to play. You I see. sneak out or not, and mm. then I was really flogged. I, every time I go to play football, when I come back, I got punished for that. Mm. Until I made had a breakthrough in 2002, my first World Cup in Canada, and then the whole story changed. So that was when my parents, my family's friends and colleagues supported me, to, you know. But to be honest, it was not really easy for me. It wasn't easy at all. Hmm. Playing football. So when, when the success came, then it was you won fans. Okay. Um, let's talk about the Super Falcons. We'll still come back to uh, ways we can develop grassroots football. The Super Falcons, defending champions anytime, any day. And in your time, you, you, you ladies were also dominant. This problem of unpaid bonus, allowances, did you, did, was, it, was it around in your time? Oh, of course, to, to be honest, it's, it was, it's heartbroken and it's kind of bizarre now. Because I remember then when I was playing, um, during my days, it's still the same old story. Sometimes when you play and after winning the tournament, you know, salary not being paid, bonuses are, are not being paid to you. And sometimes when you complain, they see you as, oh, She's a, uh, a bad person. She wants to scatter the camp and stuff like that. And sometimes you're even scared to say something because when you speak out, it, it, it becomes something else. Like you maybe don't get caught, caught to, uh, back to the camp and then you're scared. And you know, for me, I don't think this is the best thing. Or this is not the right thing to be doing at this point. Yeah. And I haven't had like last year when they played the Nations Cup. I was at the airport to welcome the girls. And I really know what they went through before uh, they came back from Cameroon after the tournament. But the same thing that happened to me when I was playing in and four. See, the same also happened because after the tournament, we refused to come back to Nigeria to, have, uh, to bring back the, uh, the, the, the cup. And we received a call from there, like, okay, you guys have to come back to Nigeria. We said no. no you, you guys say you're not coming back. We, we refused to come back. We, didn't, we, we, we refused <laughs> to come back because we believe when we come back to Nigeria, it will be a different story entirely. We were there and then they brought the money back to us in South Africa. And when we got back home, you know, the same coach that handed us there was sacked because the players speak up because they want to, their money to be paid. I want you to be part of this um, women's football development. I want to hear from you because I sat and uh, is um, an ex-international. She's just telling us she played from 2002 to 2008 and the problem was around then and we're still going through the same thing. I said from when the Super Falcons won the, uh, the African Women's Cup of Nations till now, they have been inactive. How do you think such a team, they put them together, you think that, that would do anything to the mentality? You think they can still be the same dominant Super Falcons? Sincerely, uh, success doesn't don't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. But let's, like you said now, um, Wafu is around the corner. In the first place, there was no player in camp, no friendly matches, no coaches, so to say. And I heard then that I want to employ like a foreign coach. And later I heard that the foreign coach refused to come. And now this tournament is around the corner. So when they call, call the girls to so come back in those days, we used to say, okay, Nigeria is the uh, African um, champion. But now all these African countries, up to that, we should have thought, you cannot even be proud of yourself. Okay, I'm in Nigeria and we'll play a tournament, you're going to win. No, because every other country do what it takes to make all these girls like, play good. And then when they go to tournament, they perform marvelously. But Nigeria now, we have to struggle to even to, to win some other countries, South Africa or Equatorial Guinea, which is not like that before. Mm.